Today, I'd like to talk about gross domestic product and a company that I absolutely love called 3M. 3M is the old Minnesota mining and manufacturing company, but most people know it for their scotch tape and uh, post notes. Uh, but first on to GDP this week, it was reported as being a very positive number at 2.9% increase in the last quarter, calming fears and generally considered a positive uh, report. But if you look inside this aggregate, all-encompassing number that accounts for supposedly everything in the economy, you see that it's a bad report and that it indicates uh, negative things rather than positive things. And that's one of the things about Austrian economics is these all-encompassing macroeconomic statistics usually end up hiding the relevant features of the statistics in the economy. And right off the top, it shows, as we all probably know at this point, that housing is down and down significantly, and not just during this past quarter, uh, but for several quarters now, uh, indicating weakness in housing, which is a major player, and it's a major player in growth. A growing economy is one that is such that people are building more houses. Investment was also weak, and of course, investment is key to economic growth, new machinery, new software. You know, if companies are buying more and more of that, that indicates that they have prospects for economic growth and profits. And weakness is a sign of trouble. Government spending was up, uh, and that's not a good sign. And finally, durable goods orders, big ticket items that last three or more years, at least expected to last three or more years, was also up and positive. But if you look within that report, what you see is that almost all of the increase was attributable to a catch-up in airplane orders. So airlines and the military are buying more planes, uh, and we can understand why, uh, given air traffic congestion, but the fact that it's all in one area is suspect. So those reports would sound good on the six o'clock news turns out aren't quite so good and actually point us in a rather negative direction. So 3M, uh, it announced job cuts this past week, and that might be a little bit of a surprise for some who associate 3M with scotch tape and post notes, uh, office supplies, things of that nature. You know that well, basically, those are things that we don't, because they're small ticket items, we don't usually, you know, do our budgeting around those items. So we don't expect, even in a recession, that consumer good companies are going to necessarily do terrible compared to technology and finance companies. But, as I said... I love the 3M company and its products. Uh, you're probably not even uh, vaguely familiar with the, the whole host of different things, adhesives, abrasives, materials, hardware, cleaning supplies, electrical, medical, dental, lubricants, uh, you know, just all sorts of things. And of course, tape. Duct tape is something they invented. They've invented tons of things up there at 3M, and, and that's why I love them. And as a matter of fact, I wrote an article many years ago about how Michael Jackson and duct tape, 3M's duct tape, saved me. Uh, and you can find that on lourockwell.com. 
many years ago. And I showed uh, that 3M products actually help me deal with my allergies um, quite well, and it's uh, really caught on. But as I said, 3M is not just a consumer products company. They do electronics uh, that are geared towards discretionary spending, uh, manufacturing products, industrial products, construction products. So they're having trouble in those areas. And in general, a slowdown in 3M, and this is important, is a sign of economic difficulties across the board because they sell products across the board and they're international. Uh, so their sales are international, their distribution is international, some of their manufacturing is international and they provide components into a wide variety of other companies' products. Uh, they also have a couple of uh, lawsuit problems uh, regarding, well, products that they provide for the military, earplugs, uh, for example, for, you know, military people and tanks and in cockpits ar around the globe. Uh, and also, they produce the firefighting foam for firefighters. And uh, so they're in some legal troubles as well. But our main concern here or issue is that 3M is a very diversified company uh, product-wise and uh, globally, and, and yet it's having trouble too. So it's not just the high-tech uh, companies, the streaming companies uh, that are having difficulties. Uh, it's really starting to show up across the board as inflationary pressures uh, are, of course, making it difficult for suppliers to raise their prices. Uh, and at the same time, they're facing cost prices and slackening demand for uh, products. And if we look back, uh, we see that when March 1st, 2020 rolled around, 3M stock price was $136, was down to $136 a share, but after the Fed opened the floodgates, the Treasury spent trillions of dollars, the share of 3M went up over $200 uh, a share. And most recently, in today's environment, the stock is selling for about $115 a share. So it's lost about 45% of its value since May of 2021. So it's a sharp, sharp sell-off. Uh, in a company that was often considered to be sort of immune or insulated uh, from macroeconomic events. Um, and what this tells us is that the pain of uh, the Fed-fueled collapse um, is hitting us across the board now, and that we should expect the sectors that are adversely affected to continue to expand um, across the economy, and we should see those subsectors within GDP continue to weaken and eventually bring GDP into the negative uh, category. So those are two things that I was looking at this week. I hope you found that of interest and helpful uh, when looking at the economy. This is Mark Thornton from the Mises Institute.